no one else. And now, here is Mike Gallagher. I'm in Tampa today. We're going to be in San Diego next week. A little bit of travel in our lives. Always love bringing you the show from the road, especially after an event like last night when hundreds of people came out to join us for one of the 100 Days of Trump Tour events and the love that we experience, the support, the enthusiasm, and the clarity. The clarity. Here's a little bit of clarity because the media has lost its mind over the coverage uh, of, of Jim Comey, the FBI director, being fired by the President of the United States. Well, just moments ago on Capitol Hill, I want to take you to a hearing that's being conducted and the acting FBI director, Andrew McCabe, and this is this is significant stuff. Breaking now on the Mike Gallagher Show. One of the mysteries for me about the hysteria over the firing of James Comey has been the assertion that somehow the investigation or any investigation would stop or cease because the unpopular FBI director got fired. Well, Senator Marco Rubio asked... Acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe moments ago that very question. Mr. McCabe, uh, can you, without going to the specific of any individual investigation, I think the American people want to know, has the dismissal of Mr. Comey in any way impeded, interrupted, stopped, or negatively impacted any of the work, any investigation, or any ongoing projects at the Federal Bureau of Investigations? As you know, Senator, <clears throat> the work of the men and women of the FBI continues despite any um, changes in circumstance, any decisions. Um, so there has been no effort to impede our investigation to date. <laughs> well, okay. I guess he's he must be part of the, the Russian conspiracy too, right? The Russian conspiracy involves, you know, James Comey being taken out decapitated we kept hearing for two days he, the, the fbi was decapitated with the firing of james comey rush limbaugh said it yesterday and he's absolutely correct donald trump has now trolled the media into becoming literally insane these guys are literally insane they are they are crazy They are absolutely berserk. And um, it's kind of an interesting thing to watch. It's a rather fascinating thing to watch, actually. And uh, I like being on top of it the way we are, and I like being able to bring this to you every single day. There's going to be a documentary on Netflix tomorrow night called Get Me Roger Stone. Oh, very young, what will you leave us this time? At this event last night in Sarasota, a whole bunch of people talked about the authenticity of Donald Trump, the originality of Donald Trump. I'm not sure there are any more authentic, maybe some would say eccentric figures in the body politic than Roger Stone. And tomorrow night on Netflix, there's going to be um, a documentary called Get Me Roger Stone. He loves the game. He has fun with it. And he's very good at it. I'm an agent provocateur. Political strategist. Controversial as you can get. An incredible capacity for treachery. Win at all cost mentality. When people think of Washington corruption, they think of Roger Stone. Those who say I have no soul, those who say I have no principles, are losers. Those are bitter losers. There's really nobody quite like Roger Stone. The Nixon tattoo is really all you need to know about Roger. We really pioneered negative campaign advertising. He created the modern sleazeball lobbyist. Washington's been worse for it ever since. Stone's rule. It is better to be infamous than never be famous at all. The swinger scandal happened. My private life is nobody's business. He got chased out of Washington. He's looking to see if he can find an angle. I was like a jockey looking for a horse. You can't win the race if you don't have a horse. Roger 
Roger saw something that nobody else saw back in the early 80s. I suggested that Trump should explore a bid for the presidency. He created Donald Trump as a political figure. What have I lied about? Have you spoken with the WikiLeaks founder? You're a rape tonight. Roger, you can't just say that. You have to be outrageous to get noticed. America may be collapsing, but Roger Stone is determined to enjoy it. Now tell me you wanna you you you're not excited about seeing this documentary on Netflix. Let's welcome on our guest line the subject of Get Me Roger Stone, Roger Stone. Roger, great having you back. How are you, sir? Great to be here. You're one of my favorite patriots. Oh, well, God bless you. Are you excited about the, you know, if it's true that you say it's important to be famous or, or infamous than anything else, you, your level of fame is going to go up a few more notches with the Netflix documentary. I hear the Netflix is pretty popular, Roger. Well, you know, Mike, <laughs> the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. <laughs> well, you're talked about a lot, and, and, and listen, with all the Russia, the Russia stuff and some of the scary things that have happened to you, I, I think I thought it was perfect timing not only to talk about you know the the you know this documentary, but the role you've played in this whole amazing Trump story, uh, because as the documentary says, you were on board way before anybody else was. You were one of the originals. First of all, give me your reaction to the the firing of James Comey and the media hyperventilation and the Democrats who suddenly act like James Comey is Mother Teresa. Yeah, I mean, two days ago, they hated James Comey. They thought that he lost Hillary the election, uh, and they wanted him replaced. Now Trump fires him. Chuck Schumer flips overnight. James Comey's the greatest thing since sliced bread. (laughs) As far as the Russian collusion narrative, this is a steaming plate of BS. This is a scandal in search of evidence for which there is none. Right. John Podesta, the Clinton campaign manager, invented this charge to distract from the fact that he and his brother and Bill and Hillary Clinton were deeply in bed with the oligarchs around Putin, made millions of dollars after that association. What better way to distract the people and say, oh, Trump's in bed with the Russians? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I specifically am jonesing to testify for the Senate and House (laughs) Intelligence Committees. I don't need immunity. I don't need a subpoena. I'm already thinking about what to wear. Let's do it. (laughs) But, of course, every time the Democrats advance this pathetic narrative that the Trump people colluded with Russia, you come to, they all, they all point to you. They all figure, well, Roger's got something to do with this. He's got to be because he's this operative who, who's been effective and impactful over the years. He, he plays hard. He rolls up his sleeves. I'm sure you've been talking to the FBI m- numerous times over the last six months, right, Roger? Actually, I have to tell you the truth. I have not heard from them. I'd be happy to. I'm happy to answer any questions. But, Mike, I do think, based on a New York Times story on August, pardon me, on January 20th, that I've most likely been under surveillance since June. Mm -hmm. A number of things have popped up in the Internet and in news stories that could only have been gleaned by someone who hacked my email accounts. Right. Uh, And therefore, you'll find a lot of funky stuff in my email and in my text messages and probably my phone calls. I'll Mm -hmm. tell you what you won't find. Any Russians, (laughs) any Russian contacts. And incidentally, before you and, and incidentally, before you dismiss Roger as being kind of kind of a wild-eyed conspiracy theorist about surveillance, today we spoke to Senator Rand Paul, who informed us that he's been told by two reporters that there is indication and evidence that he has been surveilled, that he has been, his lines have been tapped and everything else, and he's trying to get to the bottom of that. So there's a lot of shadowy stuff going on. But, of course, the Democrats are holding up the shiny object saying, oh, Trump's people colluded with Russia. Tr- Russia impacted the election. Yeah, Russia forced voters in Ohio and Wisconsin to vote for Donald Trump, didn't they, Roger? Well, and more importantly, I mean, I do think the House and Senate Intelligence Committees have an important role. We do need to investigate what Susan Rice was doing, looking at classified surveillance material. Yep. We do have to realize why FBI Director Comey and NSA Director Rogers said under oath in front of the House committee there was no no surveillance at Trump Tower. Right. And, 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 and that's a lie. And, and Roger, it's not like Susan Rice is refusing to testify before Congress or anything, right? 
Yeah, although that seemed to come and go out of the media like almost overnight. Blink of an eye. You know, we got to get we got to get Paul Manafort and Roger Stone up there. Never mind Susan Rice. Yeah, forget Susan Rice and her refusal to testify. It's incredible. Roger Stone is with us. He's the author of The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. I've always wanted to ask you this, Roger. You've advised, you've been senior campaign aide to three different Republican presidents. Uh, it, you were with Donald Trump in an official capacity, uh, and then you weren't. And and I've asked you this before, but for the benefit of people who are going to watch the documentary tomorrow on Netflix and and continue to follow your amazing story, why are are, are you too radioactive? Are you just too controversial, even for Donald Trump? Well, maybe I'm too cantankerous and too out there. I mean, at age 64. I recognize two things. One, Donald Trump is his own strategist Mm -hmm. and always has been. You don't need two strategists, his money, his name, his future, his reputation. He's entitled to do it his way. I had some early disagreements on him on technical issues. He, by the way, turned out to be right, and I turned out to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, I had my book, The Clinton's War on Women, was about to come out. I did not want people to say, oh, this is a Trump project. Trump must have paid for this. Trump must have had it written because – He had nothing to do with it, although it was the quintessential oppo dump for those who wanted to oppose the Clintons. Uh, And lastly, I had met Corey Lewandowski, and life is just too short to deal with a little twerp like that. (laughs) You're not a a fan. All right, fair enough. His word was no good. He just lied to me too many times, and I didn't need it. Roger, I I figured I could be more effective for Trump from the outside, and Mike, if you go back and look, from the moment I quit, I was beating the drum as to why Donald Trump would be a great president. Well, and and, and there are millions of people who who say you've been completely vindicated. I happen to be one of them, and I agree wholeheartedly, and I'm I'm grateful for for your voice. I'm just fascinated by how bad it's gotten from – and I just want to – you've been at this a long time, Roger Stone. Tell me about your gut reaction from the Anderson Cooper eye rolling to Kellyanne Conway to the Washington Post fake news story that they now clarified oh Sean Spicer wasn't hiding in the bushes they're trying to do everything they can do in the mainstream media to stop Mr. Trump it's it's I we knew it would be bad did you think it was going to be this bad yeah I'm afraid so the the ruling elite in this country the two party duopoly the elites of both parties who have run the country into the ground look down on Donald Trump and yep. look down on his voters right Hillary called us deplorable yep. for a reason yep so that dismissive attitude now they're in shock because Trump won and right. he endangers their whole agenda they they like things exactly the way they are you're right they don't want any changes and Trump threatens the orthodoxy. He's going to do things a different way. It's an elitist phenomena to yeah. look down on Trump and his supporters. And the mainstream media is flailing because they feel themselves losing power. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. rise of a vibrant, robust alternative media, shows like this one, Infowars.com, Daily Caller, Breitbart News, Town Hall, so many others. Yep. That drives them crazy because their monopoly on political information dissemination has been broken. Listen, I I can't wait to get out the popcorn and pull up in front of the Netflix tomorrow night and watch Get Me, Roger Stone. It debuts tomorrow. Roger Stone, we always are grateful for the time you could spend with us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. We'll talk to you again soon, sir. Great to be here. Thank you very, very much. This portion of our show brought to you by Hillsdale College. Hillsdale is a brand-new online course, Introduction to the Constitution. The lessons are all under 15 minutes long. You have to see the two-minute trailer. Go to my website, MikeOnline.com. Click on the Hillsdale banner or watch it at Mike. For Hillsdale.com, Mike for Hillsdale.com. Coming up next, the Hills Joe Concha on the Anderson Cooper eye roll and the media meltdown. Next. It's a really strange existence to live in the parallel universe that many of us live in. You know, I I, I do this radio show. Last night, uh, Sarasota, we had this great 100 Days of Trump event with my 
radio colleagues, including uh, Larry Elder, just hundreds of people in Sarasota, and, and everybody, there's so much love and optimism and excitement about what can be, you know? But but just like me, everybody in that room partakes of the media, and if you open up a newspaper, if you turn on CNN, if you if you watch ABC or CBS or NBC, you think, are they in the same world I'm in? And it's sort of like last night, even though there were hundreds of people there, we're in this secret club. We're in this, we're like, we have this knowledge, this shared knowledge that Trump isn't Voldemort. You know, he's not Satan. The Russians didn't convince Wisconsin and Ohio voters to vote for Trump. I mean, the insanity of what we're seeing from the media, it makes, makes you question your own sanity. And I get back to the hotel last night after this wonderful event that uh, that the that this great station AM860 the answer here in Tampa and over in Sarasota Salem Media Tampa and Sarasota hosted and I got into the hotel room and I turned on the TV and there's Joe Concha with with uh, Tucker Carlson talking about the media and and the the insane way they're reacting to all things Trump particularly the last couple of days with the firing of the FBI director. Joe, of course, is the media reporter and columnist for The Hill. Uh, You see him on Fox News a lot. He does terrific work. Let's welcome back on our guest line the one and only Joe Concha. First of all, Joe, can I just thank you for for giving me uh, some sanity and clarity last night in my hotel room as I'm I'm sitting there thinking, and and I'll tell you what I did. I, I bounced around between you guys on Fox News and CNN and MSNBC, the other channels, I'm not kidding you, Joe, it's like it's a different story, it's a, it's a different country, it's different people involved, I, and you did such a great job of calling out a guy who, I've said the same thing you do, is more, more times fair than not, Anderson Cooper, who was reduced to rolling his eyes at Kellyanne Conway and getting praised for that kind of of denigrating behavior on national television and you were your your clarity on it was terrific so thank you for giving me a little dose of sanity last night in my hotel room in Tampa Florida Mike we all know that you're in desperate need of sanity on a on a general <laughs> thank you so sir is- Re- hourly <laughs> but, but it's true words. look no yeah, it's I, true I'm the same boat as you right i mean anderson cooper you can go google joe concha anderson cooper look at my archive anything i've written about him has been positive because i happen to think he was a very good reporter particularly in the field his work on 60 minutes and then i gotta watch a 50 year old anderson cooper interviewing kellyanne conway who said nothing unreasonable in the interview if she said right. something that's just you know on mars then i then i get maybe that's just a human reflex but for it to happen twice and for during comments where Kellyanne wasn't saying anything that was out of the ordinary, where she was just saying, well, the president lost confidence in the FBI director's ability to do his job, and he rolls his eyes, well, what? <laughs> I mean, we're not wow. supposed to accept that pre- 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 very reasonable answer. And this is why, Mike, 86% of Republicans, according to Gallup, don't trust the media. Okay, we get that. But even 70% of independents don't trust the media, because even when they see somebody like an Anderson Cooper, who isn't you, Mike, you're an opinion host. You right. could, if, you're on, if, if they were filming you and you had certain reactions, well, that, that, that's part of the gig. But when right. you're an anchor, picture it this way. Brett Baer interviewing Valerie Jarrett, rolling his eyes repeatedly at her, a senior White House female official. The reaction would be the apocalypse, no question about it. There's a, there's a difference between an opinion guy and a journalist, as you said. And I keep saying over and over again, I'm not a journalist. I'm an opinion guy. I have a radio show. But Anderson Cooper is ostensibly a journalist. That Maggie Haberman is a journalist. I mean, a lot of these people, uh, Jim Rutenberg from the New York Times, who last year proudly proclaimed, we are to drop all pretense of objectivity and stop Trump. I mean, these guys are all in it to stop him. And by stopping him, Joe Con- I don't think they even mean four years. I think they figure there's going to be impeachment, there's going to be trials, there's going to be jail. I mean, they really have they they have revved themselves up in such a manner that somehow they have this fantasy that they're going to end his presidency even prematurely. Would you agree? In 
and Mike, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that to a certain extent, but I think there's a business aspect to this also, and they love the clicks they get, and they love the retweets they get whenever they write anything about Trump, Russia, and the next conspiracy theory. The bottom line is that there is no evidence of collusion between the Trump administration and Russia. That's not me right. saying it. That's Democrats saying it. It's James Cap- Clapper saying it. But yet we, they continue to march on with that, that narrative because they look at, say, Rachel Maddow's ratings, and all she does is Trump Russia for the entire show. They say, wow, she's killing it. Maybe right. that's and the way we get more people to watch. So, yeah, I think they'd love to get Trump out from, on a personal level, and I think on a business level, uh, that's, that's the case as well. But, but back to Anderson for a second. Uh, we're the only ones talking about this. Uh, it, when people mention Anderson Cooper, if you look at all the headlines, Google just Anderson Cooper and I roll, and right. it's universal praise, including from Chris Eliza, new to CNN, trying to impress the bosses, writes a, a full story saying Anderson's Cooper I roll is all of us right now. No, it's not all of us, Chris. No, it's not. <laughs> a lot no, of people hey, are Chris, disappointed in that, even on the Democratic side of the aisle. That's but it's not, t- that's not but how it's you win the, the argument. But, Joe, like it's, it, Joe, it's the tone deaf, don't know your audience even, don't know the room. It's the Stephen Cole bear moment where he stands up in front of his audience and he announces that president trump has fired james comey and he expects he's going to get boos and he's going to get hisses and they cheered and he looked at him and said and you could see the shock and he even said wait a minute no 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 that's not good that's bad and then he then he got them to try to you know boo trump because he couldn't believe that the instinctive authentic reaction even from a stephen colbert audience that's gonna that's gonna be hardly a group that's gonna be a convention to the heritage Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. And, and here they are, and cheering, cheering, oh good, James Comey's gone, because until they were told by Stephen Colbert how they were supposed to react, their reaction was the way most normal people are. Okay, everybody wanted him gone, he's gone, so what? Next next topic. And that's not a guess on your part in terms of what the American people thought of James Comey. Because as you, as you saw in my spot on Tucker last night, no one mentions polling around James Comey. And The Hill had two polls exclusively done for, for them, for us, right. uh, from Harvard and, and Harris. And it found in March and April, James Comey's favorability ratings were 17 and 18 percent, respectively, <laughs> among registered voters. When you ask Democrats the same question, they had him at 12 percent. Right. And then Trump right. fires a guy with that kind of popularity. Uh, popularity or unpopularity in this case and people yeah. are saying how can he do that well gee maybe we should listen to the american people once in a while like the media yeah. told us they were going to do after the election let's listen more to the american people and less talking between us well they're doing the same thing all over again because that's the american people sentiment that's the sentiment of politicians both republican and democratic and that most importantly is the sentiment of one deputy attorney general ron uh, rosenstein uh, who recommended that he should be fired and people keep forgetting the fact that he he was confirmed 94 to 6. It's not some partisan who recommended this. This is somebody that's respected on both sides of the aisle. But that Ro- gets brushed over to connect the dot to a Russian narrative that doesn't exist as we know it right now. Rosenstein is the key to all of this and is the is the ace that, that, uh, that President Trump has up his sleeve. I mean, that's what makes it an, uh, really an unimpeachable decision. You had, and and they, they talk about the timing. Uh, it, you guys talked about it last night. Oh, this is bad timing? What do you think the media would have been doing if, if, if Trump fired him, Comey, the first day in office? Oh, it's retribution for what you did during the... I mean, there would have never been a right time, so you got the Deputy Attorney General making the recommendation after two weeks weeks on the job it was it's a very normal process we're with joe concha media reporter columnist for the hill uh here on the mike gallagher show on a time that is really honestly it's two worlds there there's their world where they think that they've got the goods it's our world where we're scratching our heads saying is this ever going to let up joe one of you guys either you or tucker made the remark that the anderson coopers who again in fairness I say this a lot. He oh, he surprises me often with the. I, I'm sure he's playing devil's advocate, but he asks often good, tough questions. He pushes back against the the left narrative, uh, left narrative often. So you're right. I, but here he is reduced to rolling his eyes like a like a like a kid on this on the playground. I mean, just anybody else would be universally mocked for that. But in this world, in 2017, he gets praise for that. Are they? Is, are these guys destroying themselves in the process, like you or Tucker suggested last night, or do you think they're going to sit and see the the good ratings that Rachel Maddow has been getting lately? It's good for business at CNN, I'm sure. Do you think they're going to keep staying on this particular path? Yeah, I think so because, uh, Mike, honestly, it's peer pressure. What I've noticed with CNN anchors in particular, if they get a trunk aide or spokesman on their network, 
they all try to one-up each other in terms of how obnoxious can I be to this interviewee as possible. Right. Uh, every time you, you just see it, they feel like, well, we have to be tough here. But tough means, all right, ask substantive questions and follow-ups. It's we're going to make it personal, and we got to make these people look as bad as possible. So the peer pressure, I think, got to Anderson Cooper when he sees Jake Tapper up, who I used to have a lot of respect for also. Up He's on another one. He's another one, Joe. Jake Tapper. I mean, this guy is so angry and so pointed. And, I mean, and, and help me out. I've lost, I've lost track. Does he fall under the opinion guy category? Or is he supposed to be a newsman? He's a hybrid. He's what Megyn Kelly used to be on Fox News. Uh, okay. That's the way I could describe it, where, yeah, okay. they're anchors, kind of, but they also inject opinion, but they're not totally opinion like a Sean Hannity. Does that make isn't sense? That, somewhere it, in but, between. But, 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 Joe, isn't that a problem? Is that high? Isn't that a high? Because again, when when you're an opinion person, you say that you 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 acknowledge it, you wear it on your sleeve, you say like I do all the time. I'm not a journalist. I'm an opinion guy. But Anderson Cooper, he's a newsman. He reports for sixty minutes. You know, I mean, this guy is a bona fide journalist. So so you get a guy like Jake Tapper. How does the audience know the difference? How's the audience supposed to know Jake Tapper is a hybrid? They don't. And and look, uh, I think Jake saw that when he made a provocative opinion, particularly that's anti-Trump, because the press loves that, those are the clips that go viral. That's what gets you a story on Mediaite, which is the gospel for a lot of people uh, within the media. And I used to work there. I'm not, that's not an insult. I, right. I just know the power of it with, with and the influence it has uh, in, in the cable news world. Right. Uh, I think once they see stories going up on there and they see retweets going up into the thousands around something provocative that is said even if it's not correct uh but it's just as pointed as possible and as angry as possible they feel that that is vindication of them doing their job correctly in that it's not they're only just playing to one extreme side that then runs with it from there and that's not supposed to be their job bernard shaw who was great at cnn forever and ever uh, would would be just looking at CNN right now and just be saying, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, I don't Walter, care about retweets. Walter, I care about telling the story correctly. Telling the truth and telling the story. I mean, uh, Walter Cronkite, uh, certainly after his retirement, it was, he became very, very much um, a, a, an outspoken, you know, liberal Democrat. But you didn't know it during his glorious tenure as the anchor man of the CBS Evening News. No one knew his politics ever. No, look at, I, I look at Carl Bernstein and, and uh, Bob Woodward as a good example where Bernstein's gone way off to the left and he's on CNN and he speaks in hyperbole to DEFCON 1 every day about Trump. And then I look at Woodward and I compare them to Simon and Garfunkel with, with uh, <laughs> Bernstein being Garfunkel. Yeah. So I, and then yeah. I see Bob Woodward and he's just so measured. I was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner and at one breath he said, Mr. President, we're not fake news. Okay, that's fair enough. And the next he said, but this is no time to be smug and uh, and to be arrogant in the media because no one trusts you guys either. I'm like, that's perfect, all right? Because that, that's the guy who gets it. So, yeah, Simon and Garfunkel, that's, that's your best example. That's a, that's a great, great, great analogy. Final question, Joe Concha. What, what does uh, somebody listening to me right now and you and I talking do? What do we do about – and I had a listener say this to me last night here in, in Florida. They said, Mike – how are we supposed to cut through this? How are we supposed to to know what's fake news or real news? How how do we how do we push through this to get to the truth? And and I thought it was a it seemed like a kind of a, a a bizarre question, but it was very sincere. Joe, you have any suggestions for what 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 Americans are supposed to do to try to get to the truth? Yeah, wave the white flag. Give I'll up. I'll tell you why, Mike. The business model as it stands now is all about ratings, it's all about clicks, and it's all about the things I just talked about before, being as provocative, provocative as possible and playing to what you think is your audience base. And that's the way uh, you do well in this business. CNN purposely went left, as you could see, because it, it served their business interest better. No one likes the mushy middle. Everybody likes one side or the other side. They feel validated in their own opinions when they get information and news from one particular source, from one particular ideology, and that's that's the business model. There are plenty of people in the middle, that, that, like the woman that you spoke to, that just want the story. Uh, but that's not really existing anymore because, unfortunately, it's a race to be first instead of accurate, and it's a race to be provocative instead of pragmatic. I just made right, that up off the top of my head. It was real well put, Mrs. Lincoln. I'm glad you liked the play. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that gunshot kind of distracted from the second act. Holy yeah, cow. All right, Joe, we'll keep fighting the good fight. We, uh, we so appreciate your work. And, again, you did a great job on Tucker last night. Uh, come back and visit with us again soon, all right? Another check cleared. Thank you, Mike. You got it. All the best. Joe Concha, media reporter, columnist for The Hill. I refuse. The I mean, I refuse to just wait. I know what he's saying, but I'm not going to wave the white flag.
we got to keep fighting. We can never give up. we got to hold our heads high, and we'll get to the truth. You'll see. You and me together. Fighting the good fight here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Studios of AM uh, 860, The Answer in Tampa. We had, a, again, a tremendous event last night in Sarasota. And I had some people thanking me and, and excited about the Global Leadership Summit because they're going to have a, um, a satellite location near here. Uh, there's 600 satellite locations the weekend of August 10th and 11th. This is going to be the big Willow Creek Association uh, Global Leadership Summit, August 10th, August 11th. It's going to take place in Chicago. Uh, it's already packed and sold out in Chicago, but you can you can participate in this Global Leadership Summit where they just have gathered the leaders from all walks of life, the religious world, the secular world, sports, um, you know, John Maxwell, one of the featured speakers last year, he's written some of the biggest, best-selling leadership books of all time, including the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and the 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader. He's a, he's a fascinating guy. Here, here, here he is talking a little bit about selfishness. So you think you're not selfish, huh? I think we are. If you don't think you're selfish, let me ask you a question. When somebody takes a group picture of you, when you look at that picture, who is the first person you look for? <laughs> and, and, if it's a good picture. I mean, you look good, you look good. That's how you determine it's a good picture. You look good, you say, oh my gosh, good picture. Hey, send that to me, send that. <laughs> It is really, really fun, fun stuff, and uh, you can participate uh, from one of the 600 different satellite locations around the country. Just go to MikeOnline.com and click on the Global Leadership Summit banner at the top of the page. Use the uh, referral code Mike. You'll get a big discount and take part in this Global Leadership Summit from Willow Creek Association. MikeOnline.com. Click on the Global Leadership Summit banner. Thank you so much, all of uh, Salem, Tampa, Sarasota, for making us feel so welcome this week. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Be safe. Fight the good fight. I'm Mike Gallagher. God bless America.